You know, if I were if I were a member of one of these terrorist groups that hates America, if I were a part of Taliban or or Al Qaeda or ISIS or one of these, if I were, or really even even some even some homegrown things, but if I were if I were an enemy of America, if I were a part of a group that absolutely despises and hates America, I know exactly what I would do today on 9/11. I would do absolutely nothing. And I'll tell you why. Because America, as we sit here today, I think we all know this, America is tearing itself apart. Amen. And, and in fact, the worst thing that the enemies of America can do is give us an enemy of our enemies. Because that's what brings people together. You know, the last time I, I you know, I, I got to think of the last time that Congress, our Congress did anything as a unified body was on September the 12th. When they stood on the steps of our, of our nation's capital, they held hands, they prayed, and they, they showed this unity. And I, I believe that, and of course, that, that didn't last very long, did it? That lasted maybe a few weeks at most. But I, that, I think that was the last time they actually showed any kind of a unity among them. And, uh, you know, and, and, and so the, you know, as, long as, as long as there's not some outside force that tries, to, that tries to harm America right now, America probably will continue to self-destruct. We understand that, don't we? I, uh, you know, the news media on both sides of, uh, of the aisle has uh, exaggerate the stories to serve their own agenda. We get that, right? With its, you know, the, the, uh, and again, depending on, it doesn't matter which side you're on, both sides exaggerate, both sides try to, try to distort things. You know, our president has given two speeches here, and I don't want to, I'm not going to, I don't like politics in the church, but the fact is our president has made two speeches here lately that basically divided the country in half and, and, and said, if you're on this half, you're good. If you're on that half, you're not good. And, and so on. And it goes on and on and on, right? It, we, we understand how that works. And so I, I long for the days. I don't know if you, how, many of you are old enough, you know, you're as old as I am. You remember and long for days maybe where somebody like a Walter Cronkite, Cr Cronkite, Cronkite, you know, just sort of gave the news, just sort of just told the news. And then let the American people decide what they believe about it instead of, the, you know, but this is where we're at. You know, we, we remember, I remember, I remember Ronald Reagan, the ultimate conservative who would work so well with Tip O'Neill, the Speaker of the House, the ultimate liberal, but they had a respect for one another. They worked together for the good. They, it, these were leaders who were able to rise above the personal in order to find the good. You with me on that? And we long for those days, and I, and I get that, and, and, uh, and, and so forth. So this is kind of where we're at in our world right now, and we see the effects of, of what's happening. So again, it's not, it's not something from the outside of our nation that is the real threat to America anymore. We, we understand that. In fact, that would be what would probably bring America together. But what I wanted you to see in that video, you know, we think about, the, um, we think about what, was, what was going on there, the heroes, and there are always heroes. When there's a tragedy, there's always heroes. When there's a crisis, there's always heroes. And the heroes of that time, you know, those firefighters that rushed into that building, it, they didn't care about politics in that moment. There were no petty issues. They weren't worried about what somebody's calling them today and using this right term for me and all that, all this petty stuff. They weren't worried about, uh, they weren't worried about defunding the police. They weren't worried about any of these issues that we deal with today. They were simply trying to, to run to where the chaos was even if, it, even if they can only save one life. Do you know those firefighters, I believe, that would, I, I believe those firefighters would have rushed into that building if there had only been one person in there, yes? Because that's what heroes do. That's what people do when they're in that, to save a life. They wanted to save a life. They wanted to save a family. And, and so this is one of the reasons then that I, I wanted to, Ken and I wanted to introduce you to Patty Burnett because that is her life. Patty doesn't care who the person is, what color skin they have, rich, poor, you know, whatever the issue is, it doesn't make any, none of that matters. She's running to where the, where the problem is. And we wanted you to, to, to meet her today. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know, just like these 9-11 heroes, you know, Patty, I want to say to you, when everybody else is running away from the homeless, I want to thank you for running to them. Amen. 
I want to thank you for, for climbing down underneath the bridges, and I want to thank you for, for going and looking for them. When everybody else is running away from the, the addicted, I, I want to thank you for running toward them. I want to thank you for going uh, to, where, to where they are. The, when, when, when folks are, are running from the incarcerated, and by the way, you know, I, I hope you have figured out by now that if you need a place for, you know, you pick somebody up at the jail probably all the time because they have no right, I want you to know where you can bring them, and they'll be loved. And they'll be accepted. Absolutely. But thank you for running to the places where most people are trying to walk away from. Thank you for running to when, when most people don't want to hear about the abuse of women and they, don't want to, they just don't want to hear those stories and they don't want to involve themselves in that because it's just too hard to hear. I want to thank you for running toward them, working with the lady shelters and all of those things and, 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 and you get it. Now, church, let me, let me you know, don't get mad at me, church. And you don't usually. But <laughs> while most churches are praying for the homeless, Patty's going to them. You know, while most churches are praying that God would send somebody, God, send somebody to the, to the broken, send somebody to the addicts. No, yeah, Patty's not, Patty's not praying. And I, a couple of reasons. First of all, by Patty's own admission, right, Ken, she's not really a churchy kind of girl. I told her that's okay because we're not a very churchy kind of church. <laughs> so it actually works out really well. But listen, she's not praying because she's chosen instead of, instead of you know, while most churches are praying, and again, I'm not criticizing other churches. None of my business what happens in other churches. My business what happens here. But while most churches are praying for all of these things, Patty has chosen instead to try to be the answer to the prayer. And more like her, others like her. You know, I... I um, I think sometimes, and I, and, I, and I have preached messages along these lines, and many of you have heard me say this, sometimes we pray too much. Sometimes it's, it's time to stop praying. I think a lot of times we, we, like, to, we like to use some Bible, uh, some Bible stories, you know, where Isaiah said, oh, you know, Lord, here am I, send me. You know what, Patty's not waiting for God to give her permission, she's just going. You don't need to be called to go reach the broken. I can't imagine what God feels sometimes when he hears his people collectively in, in, in churches and, and, and as a body of Christ all calling out and saying, oh God, why don't you send, send somebody to do this? And I can't imagine that God's not saying, well, what did you not understand about Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8 when I said, go ye? <laughs> when I said, go you, you go, you go into Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the world. You know, I think God, God probably gets tired of those prayers, frankly. Well, that didn't go over very well, but that's the truth. That's the truth. I can only imagine that God sits up there and saying, well, I don't know what you think I did. I wrote it. How many times did I write it for you? What do you need? You need permission to go do something good? While churches are, are praying like that, I, I, I just think that sometimes we, you know, Patty has chosen to be the answer and, and, uh, and, and so forth. Now, let me give a caveat here, and I, and I want to, Patty and Steve, I want to say this to you, but I want to say this about my people, and I believe you know this, Patty, already. We've had this conversation. The people of New Hope, I would put the people of New Hope up against any group of people anywhere in this world when it comes to loving people. I would put my church up against any church that I am aware of, up against any social group, any charity group. So please know that, church. Please know that I love you and I'm so thankful. This church was built on broken people, so we have a heart for broken people. So I believe, I believe that New Hope is a special, special place with a special heart. Patty, I believe that our hearts beat very similar to your heart. But having said that, we can always do better. We can always do more. In fact, it's only if we believe and, tr and, 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 and remind ourselves that we can do better. That's the only time we ever will do better. See, it's, 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 it's those that, that, that want that that, uh, that that will do that. And so, so uh, but again, I, but I, at my request, we've sort of brought Patty here to honor her but also kind of like a prophet of old to challenge us as a challenge to us. If somebody outside of our church is, is living out what we believe, 
then should it not, all, it should it not challenge all of us who believe that and who, who, who that's, this is what we're all together for. This is why we gather. This is why we're a church. This is why we're a family. This is why we all get together is to do that kind of work. And so we wanted to bring her as a challenge. Now, challenge to do what? Let's get, let me give you some scripture here. John chapter number 13, verse number 35. I want you to notice, here's, here's Jesus' statement. He said, by this, we're going to talk about what this is. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. You know, I, 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 you know, I think oftentimes we, we don't pay real close attention to the wording here. What is the this here? When he said, by this shall all men know that, that uh, you're my disciples. You know, we, we, what is the this? I, I, I want you to pay real close attention to, the, to the all men. Do you know, Jesus could have said, by this shall, shall my followers know each other. Look, Christians know each other, right? Christians can hear, we can, we can hear some, we can hear, well, there's not very many celebrities who talk, you know, Christian, but, uh, but, but, but there could be, you know, maybe an athlete. You can always sort of tell when a Christian is talking by certain phrases they use and certain ways they, uh, they phrase things. We can sort of tell each other. We, we know, Christians sort of know each other, but that's not what he was talking about. He said, there's something that all people will know. He said, all men will know that you're my disciples, if what? Notice, let's read the whole verse now. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one to another. What is it? Is it how much Bible somebody knows? Is it, is it how much scripture somebody can quote? Is it how clean our lives are? You know, say, well, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't chew, and I don't run with the girls who do. Right? <laughs> is, that, is that it? Look, the world right now thinks that a, being a Christian means you're anti-abortion or you're anti... The world would like for it to be all about these issues, and doggone it, some churches want it to be about that. There's some Christians want it to be about that, and it's not about that. Jesus didn't say it's your stand on politics, it's your stand on abortion, it's your stand on this. He didn't say that's how everybody's going to know who you are, but sadly, that's what the world thinks the dividing line is. He said, no. There's one thing that I want the church to be known for, and it's how much you love each other. And not just each other here, but the world. He said, I, he said they'll know you're my disciples if you love them like I love them. In fact, he went on to say, as I have loved you, so ought you to love one another. Well, can I ask you a question? How did Jesus love us? Sacrificially, Yes. So, so the point is, he said, this is what you ought to be known for. This is what I want my church to be known for. The point is this. We're not called to have church. We're called to be the church. Amen. We're called to be the church in the community. And Patty, I, 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 again, I thank you. And again, I know you're not churchy. And I don't even know where you stand on, on all this. And I know you believe in God. But, you know, by the way, the Bible says even the demons believe in God. So uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. But she's doing what the church is supposed to be doing. She's living the life that the church is supposed to be living. And what we're supposed to be doing in our community and what we ought to be doing more of and what we ought to be doing jointly with others like Patty. So, so here's the challenge. So that's the challenge. The, you know, notice these one another. Notice, notice one to another. You know, there's a lot of one another commandments in, in Scripture. Jesus gave us, look up here, please. Jesus gave us all kinds of one another's. You know, he's told us a lot of things. He said one another. Let me give you some of them quickly. We're not going to look at all the Scriptures. Let me just read them. For, I just wrote a bunch of them down because here, here's the reason I want to do this. I believe that these one another commandments I'm about to share with you have sort of fallen within Christianity in the same way that unity has sort of fallen since 9-11 in America. I think the church has sometimes maybe we've lost our way a little bit with some of these one another's. Jesus said, I want you to love one another. We see that here. He said, I want you to have peace one with another. Mark chapter 9. That means we don't have petty fighting. I said we don't have petty fighting. That means Christians don't fight with each other over petty, stupid stuff. And, and especially in front of the unsaved world, and especially in front of the unbelievers. You, you got an issue. We got a petty issue. Got an issue. First of all, it's a petty issue. Then just, just shut up. But if you got an issue with somebody, okay, shut up in Jesus' name. Is that better? <laughs> shut your pie hole in Jesus' name. That's how I used to say it. But, but that's, you have deacons. You can take, you got an issue. You could come to the church and let us help with that. 
you know, we, we, we got that. I, got, I, I can't spend a long time on that. He said, he said, I want you to have peace with one to another. I want you to be members of one another. That means, that means when you hurt, I hurt. It means when you rejoice, I rejoice. I've often said, you want to know who your friends are, win the lottery. You'll find out who your friends are. <laughs> You'll have more friends than you ever thought you had. You know how, can you imagine the jealousy, you know, you, you, boy, you take, something good happens to somebody and it's amazing to me that, that, that people, you know, are, are, are somehow, well, I deserve that more than she did. Trust me, you don't want what you deserve. I know I don't want what I deserve. If I ever get what I deserve, I, it's going to be a miserable, miserable life. But, but the, the point is, I, I, you know, be members of one another. Be kind and affectionate one another. Romans chapter 12, he said, be kind to each other. He, he said, he said uh, uh, in Romans chapter 12, again, he said, have the same mindset. It doesn't mean we're a call. We don't have to believe all the things. But what he did say was have the same attitude, which is an attitude of love. He said, receive one another. He said in, in, uh, in, in Romans chapter 15, receive one another. That means there's no, there's no test at the door in order to come in. There's no, you don't have to pass a test to be a part of that. I, I, again, I, I use the illustration, people ask me all the time, Pastor, what does it take to be a member here? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We don't, we don't, look, if you thought we're doing things the way churches are supposed to do things, you're going to need a different pastor because I don't know how churches are supposed to do things. I don't understand the whole membership thing. Last time I checked, if you're a part of Jesus' family, who am I to say whether you can be a part of this family? <laughs> so I don't know. There's no test to come in here. You don't have to be, you don't have to pass some kind of test. Now, we prefer if you have bed bugs, you go ahead and get that cared for. But before that, <laughs> but other than that, other than that, we don't test for that. But <laughs> you guys are all, everybody's doing this. <laughs> uh, receive one another. He said edify one another. That means build up. That means build up. Build up one another. He said, you know, encourage each other. Don't tear each other down. And on and on it goes. He says, serve one another. Care for one another. Forgive one another. That's a, that's a purposeful pause right there. Forgive one another. Be kind one to another. Submit yourselves one to another. And comfort one another. And again, it goes on and on and on and on. This is what the church is supposed to be known for. These are the one another's that Jesus said, if you'll get these right, people will know you're my disciples. Amen. And they'll like it. And they'll want that. But sadly, it seems like so oftentimes our human nature, even in the church, takes over and we end up with some of the things that he said, these are the things I don't want you to do to one another. Like trample one another, Luke 12. Like accuse and excuse one another. Boy, I'm so sick and tired of the, be, the, the Christianity being plagued by the scandals and everything that's going on even nationally and, and, and all these things. He said, don't judge one another. But this is being led by big time pastors. I, I, hope you're not, I hope you don't get involved in this fray, but I'm so sick of hearing, I'm so sick of getting the, uh, the emails and the stuff that comes to me uh, because, uh, because of some list that pastors get on or it comes to the church about these big name, nationally named pastors who are fighting with one another accusing one another of doing things wrong and boy they're not doing this right and they're not doing this right you know what the problem is with a national platform for a pastor no pastor has any business worrying about what some other church is doing pastor your people pastor your people and, 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 and that's what they're called to do. They're not called to pastor somebody else's is people, but this, this whole thing of judging one another he said this is what I don't want you to do Galatians 5 says don't bite and devour one another Galatians 5 also says, don't provoke one another. Don't be envious of one another. And, and, uh, and, and 1 Corinthians 6 says, look, don't take each other to court and sue one another. And boy, one of the, one of the, one of the hardest things in the world to watch is, is two Christians. Do you know that some, sometimes good people are not good together? Sometimes husbands and wives, it just doesn't, it's not going to work. And, and, and divorce is a part. Look, and divorce is, is touched every person in this room in some way. It's either you or it's one of your relatives or somebody you know, somebody you're very close to. That, that, this is our world. It happens. Boy, it's so sad when things can't be worked out peacefully, especially where children are involved. And we see the heartache of that. that you, get a, you get a professing, we have, people in, we have people in this room right now trying to live for God, trying to rear their children for God. And, 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 a, and, a, and, a, and a Christian, you know, Christians that are outside of here, you know, spouses, exes, and, and boyfriends, girlfriends, couples, and so on, 
and causing all kinds of problems. These things ought to be something that people can come to the church and let church leaders help them work through these sort of things. That's how it should be, because that's the point that he was making. So, so here's the challenge, and I, I, I got to, I'm, again, I want to be kind with your time. So here's the challenge: Are we going to talk like a church, or are we going to be a church? Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Again, prayer is cheap. It really is. Some of you are like, oh, you shouldn't say that. It is. It is. Oh, God, send somebody. What, what, if we were really going to be honest, if we were really going to be honest, we would say, God, I'm lazy. God, I don't care. <laughs> God, I don't care like you do. So send somebody who does care. Isn't that right, Ken? I, Patty, I, I, again, I put these folks up against anybody, and, and we're not, and we're not much here. We, we, you know, we don't have a lot of money here, but what we can scrape together, it goes toward people reaching ministries. Yeah. Folks, look at the chair you're sitting on. We paid six dollars for these, Patty. We paid six dollars for these chairs instead of sixty for new ones. Now, I'd love to say we chose to do that. We couldn't afford sixty for new ones, but you know. Why? Because we'd rather spend $55 on people reaching ministries, putting it into our community, trying to help somebody get their life back together. And these are very comfortable chairs, are they not? They're just a little frayed. But guess what? You're a little frayed. <laughs> I'm a little frayed on the edges. You know what? So it works out great for us because we don't fund any ministry. Our deacons are, are currently putting together a budget for next year. They're starting to work on a budget for next year. And, and I thank you for being a generous, generous people. You know, and again, we do. We try to scrape together what we can to take care of our community. But our deacons do not fund any ministries of this church that are not designed, other than have to, like cleaning products and so on, that, that are not people reaching ministries. We just don't do it. Because we feel like those, we feel like it, 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 it's not about a building. You know, yes, I know we're crowded, right? But we're not going to build some fancy building. We, we can't build a fancy building. Because we always are focused on, on, on people. I, I would love for God, I, I believe God may someday bring us, a, uh, bring us another ministry that has a, has a building already in place, but there's not a lot of people coming and maybe merge our ministries together. I, I told you I tried that once. I told you there's a church across town, got them one of the most wonderful buildings you ever saw. 20 people sit in it every single Sunday. It holds 350. And, and I said, hey, would you, think about, would you think about merging our ministry so we could really do something? And then, nah, we're not interested in that. We're not interested in growing is actually what the pastor told me. What are you interested in? <laughs> I don't understand. Again, I'm, it's none of my business. That's their thing. But, but God will provide those kind of things. But this is where we're at. It's about people reaching ministries. So let's hear God's thoughts on this whole matter of being the church. We're talking like church. What are we, what does God want us to do? What is it that God, what's God's position on this? Let me, let me just share with you what God has to say about it. Romans chapter two and verse number 13. Would you notice he says it pretty clearly here for it's not the hearers of the law that are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law that shall be justified. That's pretty clear. Is it not? He said, it doesn't make any difference. How many times you sit in church, no matter how many times you hear a church message, he Somebody who sits in church every single service that a church offers a service and hears the Word of God and does nothing is not justified in the eyes of God as much as a person who never sits in church and does what the, what the Bible says to do. Is that a fair assessment of that verse? Now, please don't get me wrong. Don't say, well, <laughs> great, I'll just stay home. <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to say. See, we ought to be doing both. We come here so that we can become stronger, so that we can become more knowledgeable, so that we can get be, so that God can work on us. We come here so God can work on us, but also so we have an avenue to reach our community. Listen, without the church, there's, there's not a lot of avenues to reach the community. A church of people can do so much more than any of us as individuals can. So, so, so we have that. James chapter 1, verse 22, basically the same thing. He said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. He said, if you're not doing this, you're deceiving yourselves. A Christian who sits in church all the time and does nothing, does nothing to try to love and, and help and work on and, and, and try to reach out to the community around us, he said, you're deceiving yourself. 
you're lying to yourself. You're coming, and, 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 and here he's kind, of, he's kind of bursting your bubble this morning because he's saying, if you thought that I was impressed by you coming, I'm, I think if God could speak audibly, he would say, I'm glad you came. I'm proud of you for coming, but I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed. I think there's some of us, we're pretty pleased. With, oh, I got up, I got up this morning and I came to church. Wow, that's awesome. Is it really that much of an effort? You get up and go to work every day the rest of the week. Okay, not everybody. But <laughs> look, I, please, again, I, 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 hope, boy, I hope you all know I love you so much. I'm proud of this church. I am so proud to be the pastor here. I know I don't deserve to be the pastor here, but I'm so glad that I am, and I'm so proud of my church, and I'm so proud of you all. But we could all do better, can we not? We can all be better. We can all do more and, and, and so on. Uh, James 4.17, last verse. Here God just simply lays it right out there for us, and this is the, this is the, most, this is the, this is the most serious of, of, of them all. James 4.17, Therefore, to him that knows to do good and does not do it, well, you miss out on a blessing. No. Well, you know, you're not going to be as fulfilled in life. No. He said it's a sin. He said, well, I didn't come here to hear that. <laughs> Look, is that what it says? Yes or no? That's what it says. It's a sin. See, we think, we think drunkenness is a sin. And it is, but we think that's a bad one. He said, no, if you know to do something that's good and you choose to not do it, well, you pick whatever other sin you think is bad. He said, that's a sin. In fact, Jesus himself said, if you have violated one commandment, you violated them all. See, that's what puts us all in the same pot. There is no, there is no well, this is the righteous pot, and this is the unrighteous. No, we're all in the same pot. We're all in the same boat. We're all sinners. We're all sinners, but we can all be sinners saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're all welcome into His family. But once we're in His family, there's some expectations. There are expectations that God has of His children. Do you know God doesn't worry about the devil's kids? But he does his. He says, he says that, you know, look, he says a father, a father scolds his own kids. A father corrects his own children. A father chastises his own kids. And, 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 and so he says, look, I want you to understand, if you don't do these things that you know you're supposed to do, it's a sin. So just like these first responders in 9-11, they responded to a physical tragedy that happened so instantly. The church is supposed to be continuously every single day doing kind of what they did running toward the problems, running toward the hurting, running toward the broken, running toward the addicted, running toward those that are struggling in this world, running toward the lost. And so, I, I, Patty, if I'm, if I'm wrong about this, last thing I'm going to say about you, but if I'm wrong about this, I apologize, but I'm guessing you don't read your Bible every day. I'm guessing you don't get on your knees and pray every day or fast every day and all that kind of stuff. Boy, she sure is living and doing the things that Jesus said were most important to him. Amen. We'd sure like to partner with you, Patty. And of course, we feel like you're part of our family today. And, 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 and we certainly want that. So let's be the church. Maybe we, the challenge is, is maybe this, what can I start doing? What can I do more of? Maybe it's some, maybe what I need to stop doing. What, whatever it is in, in your, however God has spoken to you, whatever the Holy Spirit says to you in this message, let's respond to that. Let's not, let's not be that, that, that person, that Christian that sits and hears, hears the truth, and then does nothing with it. Maybe you want to work with our children. Maybe you want to be a greeter. Maybe you want to get out into the community. Be that person that's bringing somebody to Jesus. Because after all, that's really all the church is, is one sinner bringing another sinner and telling him where he can find some help. Amen. 
one, one person who is hungry, finding somebody else who's hungry and saying, here's, I know where there's bread. It's all through scripture. Let's do that. Sherry, I, I, you know, I know you do that. You know, we've, we talked about that. You know, you're, you're, you, you, you found them. And, and you see the connections in here, and, and that's, that's how it needs to be. You know what's really sad, and I'm done. What's really sad, I think, in this world I, I, I think there are a lot of Christians. No, let me say this. There's some, there's some, Patty is not the only person in our community. She's, more sim, she's a symbolic, but she is certainly the best example I know. There are other people in the community that are doing this kind of work, doing the work that Jesus wants all of us to be doing. But many of them probably maybe don't even know Jesus as their Savior. They may not get to heaven because, because, please understand, it's not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to His mercy as He saved us. Please, good works will not get us to heaven. And it's so sad. It breaks my heart to think about so many people that do so many good works and they won't get that ultimate reward of heaven because they never really understood that it was, it was only through Jesus Christ they were taught and told and believed that it was good works that would get them there. And according to the Scripture, that's not true. And then at the same time, there's people who know that truth, who accept Christ as Savior. They'll get an ultimate reward of heaven someday, but not take anybody with them and not do the good works here that people look at them and say, I know he's a Christian because of the way he loves other people. What a shame that is, is it not? That's one of the saddest things that I can think of. Let's, let's not be that. Let's be the church. I'm so proud of you, but we can all do better.